Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's great that you can be with us even online on, um, in this discussion. Um, my name is Vasilios Dupas. I'm an independent curator and writer and the curator of programs at the Contemporary Art Society in London. Um, I was invited by Platforms Project, which I consider um, a unique initiative of bringing together um, independent curator-led and artist-run spaces in Athens, which this year is taking place as an online platform only, to um, talk about an exhibition which um, recently came down by Mike Lashkin, a well-known American artist who is the chair of the Department of Art, Architecture and Urban Planning at Cornell and who has shown his work um, in Documenta, the Whitney Biennial, uh, and has had big solo exhibitions at uh, a number of museums, including the Secession in Vienna. And Caroline May, who is also an artist, and she's the founder of Cactus Project that inaugurated its space with the exhibition of Michael's work. And um, her own work, has been shown in a number of venues, including the Freud Museum in London and One Archives in Los Angeles. And she's really concerned in parallel and hidden histories. So um, I'd like to start by asking Caroline, what was the reason for launching um, a project like this and whether it's relating directly or indirectly with her work? Hi, hi, Vasilius. Hi, Michael. Um, well, uh, I've been living in Athens for like many years, more than 20 years, and um, I'm aware of the pros and cons of the local art scene. And uh, I wanted to, I felt the need to, to express my opinion on the arts and, uh, and the city. So this is why I started Cactus Project. Um, yeah, but what was the city is getting, um, I mean, after Documenta took place in Athens a couple of years ago, I think um, there's a lot of talk about um, the city, the potential of the... Of the of absolutely, the absolutely, yes. Um, so would you like to comment, would you like to say something about yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, did, uh, Athens did get, um, had, had a momentum with Documenta and... Um, since then, there's many artists and curators who have taken initiative and have taken things into their own hands and have um, opened project spaces, which is great and, and you know, very promising. What we want to do with Cactus Project is uh, have an exhibition program, but also have um, a social agenda, a social impact. So we want to communicate, we want to collaborate a lot with the community. We are located in a very... Um, when you say with the community, do you mean with the um, local community or do you mean with the art community? What, what's both. both. I mean, with both, yeah. We are located in the center of Athens, in Victoria Square. It's, um, it's one of the most multicultural um, areas of Athens. And uh, there's lots of, you know, there's lots of... There's an edge and there's lots of tension, but it's a very vibrant very vibrant community. Mm -hmm. And why did you decide to inaugurate the space with Michael's work? Well, um, as I said, we, we're interested in a social, you know, in a social agenda, and Michael's work uh, deals with issues of urban landscape and how this is defined by uh, political and financial aspects. And we we felt that it's very pertinent. Something you know very pertinent with what's happening in Athens mm -hmm. and, in, 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 and in the neighborhood. So the exhibition for those who haven't been to your space and mm -hmm. who are watching this online and who can't see the exhibition now because um, it has come down, um, what was it? Was it an installation? Was it, can you describe it and maybe hopefully show us some... Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, it was um, an installation of uh, Michael's photographs. Uh, he has taken he has taken from like uh, twenty fourteen mm -hmm. 
in um, in LA and uh, in Palm Springs, and it's um, I'll show you some installation shots. No. And um, along with the, I have to open that. Along with the, the installation of photographs, it's for the. For, uh, 450 photographs. Um, there's also a text piece by Michael called "Were It Not from from which the title of the we took the, uh, the title of the show came from. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll share, share your screen to uh, yeah, um, be able to see what you would like us to see. Okay, and then maybe okay. press on. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if you could press on this space just, just to see it, because I mean, we, we can see. Okay. Can you see now? Well, if you press on the image, I think we can see it bigger. I'm not sure what you're seeing. Uh, uh. Just your laptop. C can you see the image? Or not? Um, we maybe can see Michael, the... yeah, may, maybe Michael can talk to us um, about the um, installation while you're looking for um, a better image. Maybe we can see the if you click on the images and then we can have them full screen. All right. Okay. Um, make it easier. Yeah, I mean, this is, these uh, images were taken between 2014 and like 2017, I think. Um, and there are images of uh, the whole area of uh, Southern California extending into Southern Nevada and uh, Western Arizona. Um, and these are the images that basically I, it's probably about, it's a selection of 450 images from a total of 750, which were more or less viable images that I had, that I used to put together the book were not for which contains about 250 images. Um, but we arranged them in, in a grid. And I guess the idea of the grid was to put the photographs pretty close together so that um, as you move in, just look at any one particular photograph, you're always aware of the photographs surrounding it on either side and above and below. And kind of giving you the sense of a, of a space, you know, so you're not concentrating per se on the individual image, but on, on the general sense that all the images together create, giving you kind of a, a, a generalized kind of and relentless kind of no, notion of what that, that space itself looks like. All the pictures are um, shot in vertical format and they're all shot with a, what you call a normal lens. So it's pretty much the human eye view of what you see on the ground, um, walking around uh, in that part of the country. It's a pity we can't see them. Uh, maybe, Caroline, you can take one image and click on it and then, or you can go into your pictures folder so we can see one of them or the installation of it. If, because if, the way it's shown, it's just a folder now, they, what's inside your folder. So mm, yeah. I am screen sharing. Uh, so it's not coming up. Yeah, it's uh, not coming up. Yeah. yeah, maybe if you go- Because it does to, say I am screen sharing. Yeah, but if you go to a different folder, which is your pictures folder instead of your desktop. Okay. Or if Michael wants to share any images, like do you have any of them handy? And maybe you could, because um, I think it would be helpful to be able to see while we are talking about them yeah i'd have to i'd have to locate them it'd take me a second um yep. i can do that if you want um, i don't have the installation shots oh great oh you got it do you have the installation shots or did you say i have the installation shots or, or did you ask? i i don't know if i have them per se i do but i don't know where they are yeah but i mean even if we have a couple of images, I think just- You know what I can do? I can go into the book and I can show you from the book, the images from the book. Let's do that. It's not the installation per se, but it is the same images and they'll be, um, yeah.
Here we go. Can you see this okay? Yeah, um, Caroline, if you stop sharing your screen, okay. allow Sorry. Michael to share. Okay, let me just. All right. Okay, um, here we go. Can you see that? Yeah, we can do. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna put it on uh, full screen mode. This, yeah. These are actually the images of the book. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so it's the same images. They're just not in the grid form that uh, as they were in the show. Mm -hmm. so this is the text. This appears on the wall in one long stream of two long streams of uh, of text. Um, it's like something like six hundred and fifty lines. And then these are the images here. So you can. This is now in spread form. So you see two images at a time, but you get a sense of what they look like. Mm. We can still we can see the text, not the images right now, but um, you can't see the images right now. No, no. Oh, it says sharing is paused. Bring your shared image to the front. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. But I can see that uh, we can see the text, and I can. Yeah. See, yeah. There, there you go. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, Still see him? Yeah, I, yes. now it's great because we can, you know, you flick through them. So that's great. Okay. The sense of, yeah, okay, yeah. beautiful. Yeah. So they're not the typical LA images, are they? No, only a few are actually from LA and uh, some are outside San Diego. Yeah. Some are. Um, so how do they work? Like you decided to show these pictures in Athens, which obviously, you know, a completely different landscape. Um, right. What was the um, thinking behind it? Why would that resonate? That's well, actually, that's interesting. You know, I mean, I, that was my first question, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Carolina was, was, mm -hmm. was convinced that it would work. And I was surprised and I thought I trusted her, you know, so we'll go with yeah. it and see, see, see how it works out. Um, I mean, Carolina, maybe you can you can say what your thinking was, um, and then I can say what my experience was showing in uh, Athens. But why don't we start? Why don't you say? Yeah. What you, your I opinion. mean, I think the um, the issues this work raise um, are very pertinent with, with what's happening in Athens, and this is why I think uh, it made sense to the people who came to the show, and you know, and the, and the the show made made sense first of all, and then people who visited. Did um, you know? Could um, could connect? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can see your point. Um, full disclosure: I was born in Athens, although I'm in London and speaking from London now. And Caroline's in Athens, um, and Michael's in New York, right? Right. No. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I can see what you're saying. Especially after the Olympics, there is that um, sense of building a new city and how part of the city are not too good to be aired and they should be at the background or they should mm -hmm. be, you know, they should be. Um, and, and I mean, Athens is, Athens is not a, um, as gentrified as other capitals, but we are beginning to see, you know, start of it. Some areas of Athens yeah, are yeah, gentrified. I, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, it's still a very, um, raw and uh, real and urban and not commer non-commercial city yeah but, but we are we still... are starting to see you know things how things can you know get very you know, get... yeah the great images so they were presented in in a in a form of uh, like an installation right with the text as well yes um how was that michael you said you wanted to talk about the experience of showing the work in Athens. So, well, how was it? yeah, I mean, I was surprised. I mean, I, 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 I guess I was a little. My, I was taking the the more narrow view of my work, and, and Carolina was taking the broader view of the work, mm -hmm. which you know, which, uh, and I found that the audience took the broader view of the work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for me, um, California. I mean, I shot in California because I think California exemplifies, you know, what what we call the American dream, you know, the sense of possibility, anything, anything can happen. You, know, you move west and you create yourself anew, you forget your past, you can forget your European roots, et cetera, you know, and you build a bright new future in the sun, you know, where, where the weather is always good and you have a swimming pool in your backyard, you know, et cetera. 
Um, and of course, you know, that, that hasn't, you know, turned out to be the case for the majority of people now living in California, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a steadily worsening. Um, I mean, the, the amount of, um, the, the, the sense of the dream that California brought with us is it's still a large sense depleted at this point. Mm. Um, so, uh, but I mean, I, I don't see the, the, the California, you know, the American dream per se as, as a specifically American phenomenon. I mean, it, it is a certain, it's a certain variety, maybe a supercharged variety, uh, you know, of, 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 of capitalism, really, an endless growth and possibility, hope, you know, based on tech, technological development and, you know, endless, endless, endless economic growth, right? That, that's, that's the dream. So in that sense, that's why you, that's why you said um, Carolina took a broader view right. in the sense that this could be anywhere. This could be anywhere. Yeah, I mean, in uh, fact, the, I mean, these two pictures, they remind me of um, certain places in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, without me knowing right. um, where it is, they, they could be indexes for something entirely different, you know, right. unless you point out the specific uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that because at the show, one of the first people I talked to was somebody living in Athens who'd grown up in London, who'd been in, in the in the military, but had served in Iraq. And the first thing he said to me was, this looks like Iraq. <laughs> you know, if you drive around the outskirts of Iraq, it looks like this. Yeah. And then and then afterwards, a lot of the people came up to me and said, if you go outside Athens, you, know, you find a lot of things that look just like this as well. He said like 60% of these pictures could have been shot in Greece, you know. Yeah. license plates yeah. and the specific markers of American um, landscape but so yeah, yeah. The generic of the urban development but also the process um, the, the sort of social um, cleansing if you want and, mm -hmm. and the process that's going on in the cities right. uh, in terms of the communities the different um, coming and going populations um, would you say that would that be something um, that you would agree with or or not necessarily well i mean yes i mean um the, yeah i mean there there is this kind of erasure of history that happens you know when, when this kind of landscape develops right mm -hmm. i mean i think that one of the things that interests me and this this connects what carolina was saying right off the bat about um I think what you were saying in relation to Carolina's project, in her interest in hidden histories, you know, mm -hmm. and, and and for me, all these pictures are about those hidden histories because I think um, I think photo photography is interesting because it shows you what the world looks like, but it, it doesn't tell you how it got there, right? But it mm -hmm. got there by 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 uh, a leaving a long series of traces on on the surface of of the world so like so every i, I mean i'm a personally the belief that anything that happens in the world leaves a trace you know your ability to trace to trace what you see back to its cause is, is almost impossible in most cases but the spirit of that trace remains so if there's an injustice you know the injustice is long forgotten in, in the annals of history because history doesn't record most injustices anyway but 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 the pain or the or the, or the damage inflicted by that injustice remains in the landscape or in people and is transferred from one place to another. So for example, you know, like after a war, the injuries of war, you know, the loss, it's all, it all, it all finds itself into the, into the landscape in one way or another. You can see it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so I, when I, when I look at the landscape, I think that I'm looking at, 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 at a long, at a, at a very complicated web of hi hidden histories. And I have no idea what they are, but you can kind of get the sense of it when you look mm. at it. You can get a sense of, of what the ethos of a civilization is looking at an image. In a way, it's like the, the uncanny or the hidden version of that. Of, you know, it's, it's, it's what's repressed by, by, by common history or told history expressing itself. It's like the soul of our, of our civilization expressing itself. In landscape. If you look carefully enough, you know. Mm. And, the, and the eye is well trained to try to avoid you know, some of these kind of un uncanny residues. But I think if you look carefully, it's all there, you know. I mean, um, so what, what I think what I was trying to do with the, the camera here is, is just to point it, I mean, I'm certainly not unique doing this as a long history of this in photography, but to point it into corners and into kind of um, spaces between objects that kind of reveal 
kind of what, what's been lost in history. You know, it's kind of like literalizing, like between the lines of history, what, 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 what have we, what have we, what have we wrought, you know? So your That's, relationship with photography is much more um, conceptual, really, rather than pure image making. Yeah, it's, it's not pure image making, but of course, I mean, you know, image making, you know, the way the, the mind works is that it, it, it sees what it wants to see. And yes. I'm trying to direct, direct, direct into places where the mind wouldn't ordinarily go. For example, mm -hmm. the camera can, can direct me into places that I wouldn't ordinarily see. You know, that's, that's what I, I mean, I learned from my own photography. You know, you take, you take 100 pictures and then you can see something you hadn't seen before. And that's kind of exciting. Mm. Uh, it's interesting because you've used, I mean, um, you're an artist using different media. So, you, you know, you, you haven't been using photography from the start or, you know, you've, you've, I mean, I've known your work as sculpture in the beginning. And then I know you did photographic projects and also you did books and writing. Um, and it's quite interesting how um, somehow the, um, the essence of the work, regardless of the medium, is the same. And the agenda yeah. is, um, but, you know, it's very solid. It's solidly communicated. That's what I'm trying to say. And with this particular exhibition, it was quite interesting how you, the, the, how you, you start to look at photography again, to look at the possibilities of photography, but also, um, you know, this basic idea of conceptual photography, which comes with text. Mm -hmm. And then that changes your, entirely changes your, um, looking at it and looking into it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so with the with the text, which also is the title of for the exhibition, how do you see this working? Um, uh, you know, yeah. contextualizing those photographs, basically. Well, I mean, the, the two were written. Uh, the text was written separately, and actually, mm -hmm. years before, you know, I took the photographs, and I, I always thought I, there was something I could do with the, with the text. I mean, I'd given a few readings of it. I'd shown it with some video projection in the background. It always seemed to work with visual imagery somehow associated with it. The first time I did a show version similar to this in New York City, I read the text at the show. Um, but actually putting the text together under, you know, in this format, um, like in the book, for example, with a, a line from the text under every photograph, um, or for example, as, you know, as we did in, in uh, Carolina's show at uh, Cactus, on the wall, like having them physically associated with each other in close proximity. I think what I was thinking was, is that, you know, the, the, the text is largely pulled from everyday phrases, you know, that I, that I think some of them are cliches, um, and, but, but some of them reflect, you know, a kind of a material reality that is unavoidable. You know, I mean, it talks about like kind of infrastructural facts in some cases, you know, or things that you can't do simply because, you know, there's a border or a fence or a law or something like that. So I, I see them, the, the, the phrases in the text is pulled from the everyday world and the photographs are pulled from the everyday world, you know, like the most kind of banal kind of expression of our, of our reality. And you put them together and they, and they should technically coexist well together because they are from the same world. And, and even though, you know, that you might not fully understand the connection of one line of text with one photograph, you know, I maintain that it's still there. You know, if you look hard enough, you'll find a connection. And I think that's, that's it's like a dialectical pairing challenging you to, to, to make sense of it. So that, that, that was what, that was what drove the connection between the two. In the first place. I felt when I, when I saw the um, exhibition, I felt it was a very successful um, way of presenting it because um, it, it, it's not seen as, as poetry or as something that you read as text. Mm -hmm. um, and then the photographs are not just photographs. So I think one is um, influencing and affecting the other. Mm -hmm. Uh, profoundly without you know making it so evident but then somehow it it really messes up with the way you look at the photographs and the way then the photographs um, change or alter the way you give meaning to what you're reading to the words right. so I, I thought it really worked um, well but um, obviously the the text is is very poetic but also it's it's you know these could be 
political statements or they could be about utopia or, or possibility or the lack of possibility or the loss of um, things as well, um, freedoms or whatever. How do you position yourself in relation to that? Well, okay. I mean, I think it's interesting that you mentioned utopia, you know, because I think that in every one of those lines and in, and also in every one of these images, there is, if you look hard enough or there is kind of an image of utopia, you know, even though it's, it may have, may have been forgotten, it may be degraded. I think that, I think, honestly, I think that almost everything we do as human beings is geared towards some, you know, utopian idea. You know, I mean, it's driven from somewhere deep inside. We're hoping for a better world and that whatever we're doing, as brutal as it might be, might help materialize that better world, you know. So it's, it's kind of about the loss of utopia, but still that the, the idea of utopia remains alive in these images, you know. Yeah, at least the, like even the buildings when they started. I mean, you look at something like mm -hmm. the one we're seeing now, which is, you know. In, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, but, it's hard, but it's there. Yeah. <laughs> when it was put up, when, when someone um, thought of it and, and they erected it and they did build it, um, it must have been quite something for the area and, and for, I don't know where it is, but... Um, yeah, a sign of modernity and whatever that yeah. me meant. But there's, there's, it's as if it signals something uh, not very, something not very positive. Right. At this point, it? it's, 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 yeah, it's a, it's, it, we recognize so much of it at least as a failure, right? But, okay. um, but I don't know. It depends how you look at it. For some people, this, you know, it might not look like a failure. I mean, if you if you look in terms of the material possessions you've acquired you know, on your particular property and your car and your boat, you know, it still represents right, some that's sort of- That's why I mentioned about the text and the photographs working together because um, somehow you're mediated by the text to read, mm -hmm. to sort of look at the photographs in a different way and then also to um, go back mm -hmm. to the text right. through the photographs. And I think that's quite interesting. So um, what you're saying that there is, um, if you were just looking at it, you could go back into, I don't know, archaeology or the history of the buildings or um, the history of the image or, you know, the ideal they had when they were doing this. I don't know. You could, there would be so many ways to look um, into the picture. But um, now I think the way you navigate the, um, the exhibition, I think it's, it's really fascinating how um, so many other ideas, counter ideas, um, you know, ideas about possibilities um, come up. That, that's at least that was to me. It was it was pretty intense when I was looking at the show. Yeah, I mean, I, I also think that you know, each the text and the imagery, in a way, they they, they reinforce each other, but they also mm -hmm. frustrate each other in a way mm -hmm. too. Because if you look at the imagery and you, I mean, every time you look at an image, right, there's, there's language associated with it, you know, and, and that language, unfortunately, is, is, it's pretty weak, you know, it's not, it's not a well-developed language, the way we use it to think about certain things. It's like trying to describe, you know, if you try to describe a photograph to something, to somebody, it, it always falls short, right, and, and, and it, it, it loses, it loses anything that, that isn't literal in a way. Um, like the hidden history, that's lost, right? And and so you see the text, and the text the, the, is the language that we all use, right? But um, but but it's insufficient, right? You know. Um, how far do you think? I mean, we talked about some of the images being generic and and mm -hmm. in other ways universal. Um, how far do you think what we are going through which is the majority of people trying to make more money so that they go into a better house and also this creating an imbalance to the environment that we occupy let, let me just put it like that um how far do you think this is a theme of the of the work or in the work i i think it's i think it's the important theme of the work mm -hmm. yeah i mean um i'm trying to i'm trying to get a, a kind of a meta view on the whole thing that's really what it is we have past the particulars of it um 
yeah, because there's this, this kind of like what it's called, what is called, what's the word they use? Um, externalization. I'm not sure that's the right word. You know, you see that everywhere. You know, there's garbage all over mm. the landscape, right? But mm. it's garbage that somebody like threw over the fence because inside the fence, that's their property. And then, you know, there's a sense of the, of, of the private or w what needs to be taken care of. And then, like, the nice thing about California is not the nice thing, but the kind of the revelatory thing about California is that things don't are completely visible on the, on the surface of the ground. You know what I mean? It's not like mm -hmm. in the country where I live now, so much gets covered over by foliage and trees and buried, you know, and anybody out there in the West, you know, it just blows around in the desert forever. So any, 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 any attempt to hide something in a, in a, in a sense is, is frustrated by just mm -hmm. by the topography itself. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing when, when it comes back to these, um, to these works that I really wanted to ask is how do they relate to the present situation to, and I mean, I'm talking about the, um, the fact that we were striving to have a nice garden and, uh, and a clean car and a beautiful whatever. We didn't care much about the environment. All of a sudden, um, we have um, this confinement um, where we are in lockdown and um, the air is fresh again and we are scared. We're inside our houses. We can't appreciate the, the, the outside. So all we've got left is our mediation of... Um, the outside space of the environment of what you know the real um how far do you think this um is a disruption or this is a new normal <laughs> excuse me um that's a really good question and I, I like the way you're you kind of brought it back to the way we're now confined in our private spaces again that's kind of a nice nice illusion um i i think in a way I, the coronavirus has always been with us. I mean, it's just waiting to happen. So, uh, I mean, I, the, the, the kind of distinction between normal and not normal to me seems somewhat, you know, problematic. I mean, it, it's part of the, it, this is just, it's just something that's, that was waiting to happen in a way because we set up the circumstances for it to happen all along. If it hadn't happened, it could have happened 10 years ago. It could, it could happen in another 10 years. So, um, I mean, I, I mean, the pictures I'm taking right now, you know, like in, in Ithaca, I'm taking pictures of, you know, what Ithaca looks like during lockdown, but they're nothing special. They're just the same pictures you'd always take, you know, in Ithaca. And it, it, the fact is, is that just the fact that we now know that, you know, coronavirus has, has, has struck us, right, just puts kind of a, a new kind of meta meaning on, on the this on the civilization we, we've all had all along. In other words, it's, you know, it's teleological. Now we look back and we can see that it was coming all along, right? We, we set up the situation, you know, environmentally so that this kind of thing could happen. So, um, yeah, I think it, it's just the, the, the new normal is whether the coronavirus goes away or not. Now we know that this kind of thing can happen very quickly and, and, and it kind of, it, it's like an, an accompaniment to our civilization, whether it's manifest physically or not, you know, it's, it's, it's part of our condition, so to speak. Uh, that answers your question. Yeah, uh, I mean, it does, it does. Um, and I, I mean, also um, what you mentioned about the work that you're doing now, which I follow um, on Instagram. In fact, maybe we should give your Instagram so people can um, sure. check out the, the yeah. work. Yeah, let's see. Um, <laughs> if you want to yeah sure so I'll just leave it for, for you to decide yeah i put together um let's see let's see a few images let's see if i can get to uh, hold on so i think what you said about meta meaning and how we um sort of yeah bring our own interpretation into something which has always been there you know like leaves or empty or vacant buildings no these are the ones yeah i'm trying to get out of this right now that's the problem okay <laughs> here we are i think now we now we got it okay um binder one there we go you 
full screen mode. Can you see this? You see an image? Uh, no, no, not yet. Ah, I wonder why. Okay, let me. All right, uh, I see it, but you don't. So let's see what's going on here. Share screen. Here we go. This should work. See it now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if yeah. I go, let's stay, hope it stays here. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, good. So I just put together like 15 images or something. I can scroll through them. Yeah, um, it hasn't gone full screen. Oh, it hasn't. Well, maybe that won't work. You can see the image though, right? Yeah, we yeah. can see the image, yeah. Okay, so you see pretty, a second image now or not? No, not yet, but ah. um, yeah, the image is, is pretty dramatic. And obviously what, you know, what the narrative, um, the current narrative um, imposed on this image. Um, can you see now? Wait, wait a second, sorry. Um, no, you can't, can you? All right, I'm gonna have to get out of full screen because that doesn't appear to be working. I'll just I'll just scroll through here, okay? Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you can see that, right? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's it's got all the other stuff on it. Sorry, Vasilius, you want to repeat that question? I was. <laughs> no, I was just uh, basically I was just saying that. Now, with with the narrative that we are going through now, which is yeah. the pandemic narrative, basically, um, they become a lot more loaded, mm -hmm. and um, it's quite interesting how you know looking at them maybe in ten years time, or maybe looking at them, someone from a different generation altogether who doesn't know anything about the virus or the work or your work or your um, agenda, what you're trying to do with, with photography might read them differently. So I find that fascinating when it comes to photography itself as a medium, but also particularly interesting when it comes to your work and the I, moment you decide to have an exhibition and what the exhibition is saying in terms of um, curating. Because I think is your, there a sign? Sorry. your exhibition at Caroline Space was very much a curated project rather than um, you know, a selection of work that you were done in 2014 and decided to put together. Do you have titles, Michael, for this new work? Um, and no, I mean, just as, <laughs> just as a book or a, uh, you know, as a, as a body of work, I, I, I have titles for them. Um, this doesn't have a title. I have no idea what it, this project feels like a visual element, but I want something else to go with it, to contextualize it, yeah. to turn it into a, like to curate it, so to speak. So it's not mm -hmm. just images. And um, maybe a curator could help with that or, you know, or, or I mean, I've been writing, I'm trying to find the language that might accompany this. I, ha I haven't, it's still too new mm -hmm. in a still way. Still work, or, yeah, new work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I kind of do want to make sure they're just not images, like you say, floating in the world. Yeah. You know, um, but I, I, I do want to attach something to them that doesn't, you know, overdetermine them, but does indicate what it is I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this project's kind of fun in a way because I live in Ithaca, right? And Ithaca mm -hmm. is, this, is this, it has an image in the world, you know, of, as, the, as the town where Cornell is, you know, and it's seen as kind of this idyllic upstate town, you know, where this Ivy League institution is. And, you know, it's thought of you know, like Ithaca is gorgeous, gorgeous, you know, because of these gorgeous in Ithaca. And so everybody kind of creates this image of Ithaca, which really has nothing to do with what I mean, Ithaca really is like. You know, that's completely lost. And so the, in a way, I'm completely undermining a mythology with these photographs, which is perverse. You know, I work at Cornell, but I'm undermining it's the image that's associated with it to a certain degree. I mean, this is student housing, you know. I mean, student housing is a complete wreck in most of Ithaca. You know, it's like exploitive landlord or lords and, you know, houses catch fire and students burn to death. It's like when, it's people, a, when people say it's gorgeous, maybe they mean because of the university and because of the fact that you're allowed to have Right. Um, you know, that um, 
unencumbered kind of tr tr thinking. Right. Um, of course, they don't work in the university, so they don't know exactly how, um, you know, <laughs> how right. universities are these days. But the fact that the university is closed and you are, pre I presume you're having your lessons online, right? Yes, we are yes. teaching online. Um, how is that um, changing your um, view of Ithaca? And how is that empowering or giving extra uh, narrative to, to this uh, photograph? Well, hmm. it's not just a, you know, it's not a moment where you just went there and you took mm -hmm. the pictures. It's a moment when universities are closed because there is an invisible um, right. threat. Mm -hmm. um, and that is really changing your life and it's making you do things differently. So how, how is that informing this body of work? Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Ithaca, Ithaca now is, 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 is very quiet at certain times of day. You get, it feels like an abandoned, an abandoned uh, city, you know. I mean, the students are here all wake up at like one o'clock in the afternoon, right? Mm -hmm. um, so physically, it looks different. Um, there's, a, there's a sense that it's like a, a, a city, well, like all cities right now that, that have been like, depleted of their population so you can look at it in a way without without the without the activity you know that is so distracting you know so when you look at it for you know on its own terms it looks different you know i mean if you go to the mall and there are no cars in the parking lot or something or you go to the mall, it, it, it just yeah. I, I, it's like it's it's like a end of the world movie in a way I, I don't know if that really answers your question. It does. It kind of brings it back to what you were talking about when we mentioned the word utopia. Mm -hmm. So it feels as if the academic community is a utopia and this um, environment where um, right. the community the students and, uh, as well as the teachers thrive together um, is now paused mm -hmm. um, or curbed um, and then it becomes barren in a way or it becomes real. Right. <laughs> Whereas before yeah. You know, it was there was that heightened expectation which comes with utopia. So yeah. I don't know if that is, um, you know, but somehow it relates the two bodies of work um, to my mind. So it's it's quite interesting. Um, let me just say something mm -hmm. about the presentation that you are having at platforms. Uh, Platforms has been um, a success story in the sense that it's getting so many visitors and I'm sure the online platform that they are launching um, will have even more visitors um, this time. And it's quite unique. It's one of the, um, I think it's one of the two um, fairs that bring together um, as I non said, profit. Run, artist run spaces, yeah. non-profits and curatorial ventures. Um, and it would be interesting. I mean, the idea is to um, carve some sort of collaboration between the spaces. So it would be interesting to see how that is going to work through um, this online filter. Online platform, yeah. Yes, because obviously in real space, yes, you know, you connect with someone, you have a few drinks, you like the work they're showing, you feel like you have similar sensibility and you can do a project together but to me that is an interesting um, moment where you do that and, and how that develops or how that changes or how that is um, uh, moving uh, into something else so what are you showing in this platform caroline what what works well where you I'm, sh I'm showing a selection of um, michael's photographs mm -hmm. Uh, so people can get an idea of what his work is about. Mm -hmm. And then the idea is they communicate then with me and I show them more pictures and yeah. installations. Yeah. You uh, had um, a catalogue printed for the exhibition. If I'm not yes, sure. for our show at Cactus, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what you're saying about the fair is interesting. I mean, you, you lose the human contact and you communicate through, through mail. So that's a bit, I don't know, it's, it's a bit strange. You don't have the human interaction mm -hmm. with the other spaces. But perhaps, I don't know, it saves time. You just see the work, see other, what other people are, are exhibiting and you, 
Yeah, yeah I think this is also yeah. an interesting kind of fair because it's not exactly a, um, you know, a selling platform and it's more about people coming together and giving the opportunity to yeah. people to think around issues and, and hopefully um, collaborate because collaborate, yeah. such a, this is such a difficult um, landscape in, in terms of finances. Um, so it would be interesting to see how that works. But of course, the works are for sale. And I think this is, I'm, I'm saying this because this is a great time to support artist run spaces. And maybe now that people will be able to navigate the online platform, more people will be able to navigate the, on the online platform. Um, you know, the sales will translate into more projects for all the spaces. Um, but having this in mind, what is your future project? What is your, uh, I mean, have you thought about what you're doing next, especially now that we're coming, I mean, the, the lockdown is lifted. Well, it's not lifted, but it's eased. <laughs> well, we have to, um, yeah, the lockdown is eased here in Athens, um, but still things are, you know, it's difficult to, uh, to organize things. You don't know if you're going to have a second wave of um, incident of. But are you thinking? I suppose my question is: Are you thinking of? I'm, I'm sure you had projects lined up, and they got um, cancelled or postponed. But are you also thinking of using other platforms for your work? Uh, online, first of all, and then yeah, we have. I have to find new ways of showing the work and exhibiting work and communicating with people. Hmm. I think that you know you can find other ways to do things. Hmm. Are you are you optimistic with this? Um, with you know, I mean, obviously this is a digital utopia that we can all communicate. Because um, I mean, there's there's certain things we can communicate better, and there are there are other things that we cannot communicate. Um, well, you you know you have to do with what you have. There's no other way. Mm -hmm. So you, you work with what you've got. And but isn't the you digital work, you have to space, work around it. Isn't the digital space in a way um, a negation of the physical space that you're trying to address, which is basically how the area is changing and how people, local people are coming together? So where does that put you, this, this situation? It puts me in an awkward situation. <laughs> As I said, I have, you know, you have to work with what you, what's happening now. Um, create, I don't know, create more projects which are outside of the space. Um, have you thought about the future of cities at all, um, Michael? The future of cities? Yeah, like, uh. like New York or cities like London or where there's so many people and, and at this point, all these, peop all these people are staying indoors and you don't know what is happening. Like I used to, um, you know, I used to go to, a, to an event in my neighborhood once a week. We can't go to that one. So I don't know how the people, I, I mean, these were not my friends. These were people I had right. um, a lovely time with who were doing something together and that was it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know how they are, whether they've got the virus, whether their family's okay, whether they still have jobs or they don't have jobs. But um, this is going to change now. It is changing. Um, and the city is going to change. And especially with, with people like you two that are concerned about urban planning and um, the architecture of the city in relation, not just a bit, in relation not only to the buildings, but to the lives of people. Um, how do you see cities developing? Oh man! Well, I mean, I guess it requires. A, a, I don't know. I'm not a planner, honestly. But I mean, you see this huge infrastructure that's built up around the cities, right? And and, and a depleted economy, mm. and a huge population in the cities. I mean, I guess it seems like any kind of huge structural change would be like. I don't know how that would happen right away, you know. I was listening to a podcast by The Economist and they were talking about um, the times when they had pandemics um, mm -hmm. in London and people would, like, they felt that London was, was where the, the, the main problem was. Mm -hmm. 
where the big infection was. But if you were going um, outside of London, it was okay. And that mm -hmm. was, um, in a way, um, for a way of, a way for rich people to avoid the plague and, and go abroad. And I'm thinking this could also be, I spoke to a friend of mine and she said she's, she's based in New York and she's like living in a tiny apartment like a lot of artists and she's having two shows that are probably cancelled at the end of the year that um, she thought would be breakthroughs. And um, she said, I don't see the point of me being in New York. Maybe I can go somewhere else and, and have bigger space and I can still be connected. I can still be online. And funnily enough, we've always had email. We've always had this type of communication. It seems that now it's becoming a more um, credible option. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, I, there are lots of friends of mine in New York who some of them have left, you know, or mm -hmm. places upstate and that kind of thing. But, you know, I mean, it's it's a different time, though, than those early pandemics you were talking about, as you know, right? I mean, the, the virus can travel by bus from New York City to Ithaca, you know, in three hours. So, I mean, it, Ithaca has been very successful in, in, in restricting, you know, the, you know, the number of cases. But, I mean, if the university reopens in the fall, you know, there's a... It, it, could it, it could be horrible really i mean it has to be done properly and i mean you see small communities all over you know like in nebraska and the meatpacking plants some of some like incredible outbreaks in rural parts of america right mm -hmm. you know on, on some of the native american um reservations and you know small towns even in mississippi and louisiana so i mean i don't know to what degree you know being rural is really you know safe <laughs> I mean, it feels safer here because you can go out in your yard and you can keep, you know, 20 feet away from most people. You still have to go into the store, you know, and when you're in the store, you're exposed. So I don't know. Mm. Caroline, I mean, you are in the heart of the city and, and, and um, do you have people who think that they should move to the islands and do their work there and, and be... Skyping so, some of the I mean there weren't people first of all were, you weren't allowed to move outside of the city when the uh, some people did move out I mean the wealthy people did move out and went to their summer houses then you weren't allowed to go to move to to the countryside because they, they the hospital infrastructure is not as strong this was the idea but uh, Going back to your question, no, I, w I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't want to go and live in the country. Mm -hmm. Still, I mean, you know, I feel you know, being in the city, it's vital mm. for my mental health. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I actually got the yeah. Um, that's a good. Point. I mean, even the fact that I can walk around the city and at night, or you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, now it's easier. We, we are not on lockdown. We, we can talk forever, but I think, you yeah. know, what you said is like the city is vital to our mental health. I quite like that line. So let's uh, leave it there. Or whether people agree with us or not. Um, I mean, I feel the same. Presumably Mike feels the same. So this, the city still gives us so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, thank you all for being here. And I also want to thank um, platforms for inviting us to have this discussion, um, which I think was we talked about more things than just the exhibition and hopefully um, people who watch the discussion will go back and check out Michael's work, both in the platform, but also um, on Instagram and in his website. Okay. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank Have you. a lovely. Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.